Hi there, and welcome to uh, the beginning of Unit 6. Uh, we're going to be working with algebraic uh, equations uh, in Unit 6. Um, if you haven't already, uh, if you haven't already taken a look at the uh, introduction video here on my website, I highly recommend just taking a quick peek at this um, little animation. It's really short, just a couple minutes long. Uh, if you have done that, then uh, let's get going with the first lesson. Okay, so we've already seen um, uh, equations and expressions a little bit earlier this year. Now we're going to be working with solving equations and actually finding the solutions to particular equations. So an example uh, we have here is a student is doing uh, run training for track and field. They run a total of 17 kilometers over the course of four days. She runs the same distance on the first three days and then five kilometers on the last day. And the first thing we have to do here is to write an equation that represents the total number of kilometers that she ran. So I'm just going to draw a little visual uh, to kind of help me represent what happened here. Uh, on the first day, she ran a certain distance. And in the second day, she ran the exact same distance. And in the third day, she ran the exact same distance again. And then in the fourth day, we know that she ran five kilometers. And the total of all of this, the total that she ran was 17 kilometers. Now it says that uh, the distance that she ran in each of the first days is equal. So those three are the same. Uh, and then the fourth day we know was five kilometers. So <clears throat> I don't know how far she ran in each of these sections, but I can just assign to that uh, a variable, which I'm going to call D. So she ran a certain distance D three days in a row, and then five on the end. And now we want to come up with a, an equation that's going to help us represent that. Well, we know that our total is 17 kilometers, and then she ran three of these um, unknown distances, and then five kilometers on the end of that. So one way to represent this would be to write this as uh, 3 times D, because I've got 1, 2, 3 of them, plus my 5 kilometers must be equal to a total of 17. Now this is what we mean by an equation. Uh, you'll notice that it's different than an expression because it has an equal sign. So the next question we have here is how far did she run? So I'm, I'm not happy just to leave um, this unknown variable as it is. I want to know how far is that distance d that she ran. So there's two different ways that we're going to learn about uh, solving this today and then we're going to uh, do a second or a third, um, a third method after this. So method one is something we called systematic trial, which is really just a fancy way of saying trial and error. Basically, we've got our equation, which is 3d plus 5 is equal to 17. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pick uh, numbers, not totally at random, but we're just going to pick numbers out of the air, substitute them in for our variable, and see if we get the right answer. So, for example, let's try uh, something that sort of makes sense. I don't know, maybe she ran two kilometers. So I'm going to try D equal to two. What that means is I'm going to take two and I'm going to substitute it into the equation here. Wherever I see D, I'm just going to put the number two in there. And so what we get is 3 times 2 plus 5 equals 17. So 3 times 2, if you remember your bed mass rules, that's 6 plus 5. So 6 plus 5 is 11. Now, uh, last time I checked, 11 is not equal to 17. So obviously this is, this is just wrong. So the answer can't possibly be 2. But it gives us an idea because you'll see here that we got an answer that was just a little bit too small, right? 11 is a little bit smaller than it needs to be. So maybe the next thing that I'm going to try is going to be a bit bigger. Let's try D equal to, I don't know, 5. See what we get. So again, I'm going to substitute into my original equation. I'm going to put a 5 wherever I see D. And so I would get 3 times 5 plus 5 equals 17. So 3 times 5 is 15. And 15 plus 5 is 20. And that definitely does not equal 17 again. So again, I'm wrong, but it's giving me a bit more information. 
Uh, I got an answer 20, which is a little bit too high, so I'll try something a little bit smaller than that. I know 2 is too small, but 5 was too big. So maybe uh, this time around I'll try, I don't know, D equal to 4. Let's see what we get. So substitute 4 in every time you see D. So we get 3 times 4 plus 5 equal to 17. Now 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. And I'm pretty sure 17 is equal to 17. So what we know then is that our answer here, d equal to 4, is, is the correct answer. We say that um, d equal to 4 is a solution to that equation. Now, um, if that method seems a little bit kind of a scattershot approach, well, you're right. Because it just sort of picks numbers out of the air, and eventually you're going to find the right number. But what you might find with this method is that when the formulas get a little more complicated, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time just guessing at, at numbers to see what works. <clears throat> so uh, another way to do this is through something called inspection. And inspection is a little bit, um, it's going to be a little bit more of a precise method, I guess, because we're going to kind of really use the clues that we have in front of us to try to come up with the right answer. Okay, so I'm just going to write my equation again. That is 3D plus 5 equal to. And if we're going to use this um, inspection method, the first thing we do is just kind of look at the, um, the, the unknown variable. In this case, we have three times our unknown variable. And we could just sort of reason out, just sort of ask the question, what, uh, what plus 5 would give me 16? And we can sort of deduce, we can kind of work it out in our heads, well, I guess 12 plus 5 would equal 17. What that means in is that these two things must be equal to each other. Another way of saying that is that 3D must be equal to 12. Now, we haven't uh, gotten our answer, but we're one step closer. If 3D equals 12, then let's take, let's just kind of zoom in now on this, uh, this specific variable. And we'll do the same thing we did there. Kind of think of it like this. Think about 3 times something equals 12. So what would that something have to be? And again, we can just sort of reason out on our own that uh, I guess 3 times 4 would give us 12. So our answer, therefore, our distance must be 4 kilometers. And you notice when we compare this to our previous answer, we get the exact same answer that we had gotten before. Okay, That's it for the first lesson. If you have a few more seconds, I highly recommend just jump back to the website, take a quick look at these little animations here, play around with those a little bit. Uh, that's going to give you a heads up of what we're going to be doing next class. Alright, see you next time.